If you've messed with tile maps before, then you probably know you can select one of your tiles at the bottom, and then you can use the rotate function, but it's not that clear how to do this with code, so I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. I've already set things up a bit. I assume you know how to set up tile maps for my other videos on them. So I've attached a script already, but it's relatively empty. I just added these two lines here. We always use main layer 0 and main source 0, just for example. Let's make a new function note to place in these rotated tiles. As usual, to place in tiles, we use a set cell, and I'm going to use that main layer that I set up at the top. The coordinates that I'll place at, I'm just going to use 1, 3. The source ID, I'm going to use the main source ID that I set up. And for my tile set here, I'm going to use something that's not symmetric, just so we can see how it works. I'm going to use the 7 here, which for me is at Atlas coordinates 7, 2. The alternative tile is where we can set up these flags to rotate it. Note at the bottom, I don't actually have alternative tiles, and you don't set them up for this. You can think of this part at the end as a lot of options that you're allowed to set. It's a bit set, if you know what that is. Basically, you can think of it as an array of booleans each of which we say I do want this option, and by default everything is off. To do this, we use the tile set atlas source. I'm going to bring up the docs for this. You can hold control and click it, or in my case I'll use the browser version. By using the transform flip h tag, this one will flip horizontally, this one flips vertically, and this one transposes. That means you're flipping across the diagonal. But you'll notice none of these directly say how to do 90 degree rotations, 180 or 270. So I'm going to show you how to combine these to do that. For 90 degree rotation, we use the transpose flag. To combine these flags, use the pipe symbol on my keyboard that's below backspace. And we want to combine this with the flip horizontal tag. I'm going to move this to the next line to make it easier to read. Let's call this function that we wrote. I'm going to take out this extra 10 that I have placed. Yep, there's that rotated 7. I'm going to copy these lines. And below here, let's make the 180 degree rotation. Rotating 180 degrees is slightly different than the flip vertically. To show this, I'm going to go one below. And to rotate 180, let's change the first tag to be flip vertical. And we want to combine that with flipping horizontally. For comparison, I'm going to place right next to this, just doing the flip vertical. You can see they're mirrored of each other. This one is the rotation 180. This one is just flipping vertically. I'm going to comment this so we don't get confused. Now I will show how to do 270 degrees. I'll place this one in another new column. For this one we want to keep the flip vertical, but the other one we want to be transpose. There we go. You'll see mine overlap here, but that's only an issue because I'm using rectangles. If you're using squares this won't be a problem. Of course you probably don't want these magic bit manipulation related things, so instead we can create an enum to store these. Remember an enum is just used to store a lot of constant values that are related to each other. We can have rotate to zero. That just means don't apply any mask, so we'll just use zero. I'll just copy these in here. Now let's replace these random magic numbers in our program with these constants from this tile transform enum. I'll remove the flipping version to make this more clear. Let's also line these up. There we go, 90 degrees, 180, and 270. Fun fact, this is actually going to be in the docs I helped contribute, so this should be in in a few days, hopefully. Maybe even by the time you're seeing this. If we want, we can take this one step further, and we can check, is this rotated by 180 degrees, or 90, or anything? Let's make a new function for that. For this example, I'm going to assume we're always checking 
the default main layer that I set up, but for yours, that might not be the case. Let's iterate through all of these values. Since this is an enum, the way that we do that for abbreviate rotation as rot is the rotation keyword is already being used. For rotation in tile transform dot values. Remember from below, it's the alternative tile that we are setting as the last parameter. So first let's get that alternative tile. We use git cell alternative tile. Again, the main layer, I'm just gonna use the main layer. The coordinates that we're checking is the tile position that we passed into this function. We can ignore use proxies. To check if this matches one of these flags up here, since these are integers, we can use the bitwise and operation. It takes two inputs and returns everywhere that they're the same. So we want to check if one of these matches the current rotation that we're checking. If that's equal to our current rotation, then that must be how they're rotated. There's one small issue with this. Because rotation zero has a bit mask of zero, that's always going to be true. Similar to multiplying by zero, anything multiplied by zero is zero. What we can do at the end here, we don't want to check this first value. So we can use the slice. Slice lets us start checking from index one instead of index zero but maybe they were actually using rotation zero, so they didn't rotate at all. In that case, we can return rotation zero. Let's print this out to check that this works. This is kind of bad practice what we've done, where I just hard-coded in these values. And just for this example, I'm going to copy and paste them in. If this was more permanent, you would want to use variables here. We can check, does this equal rotation 90? Similarly, for these other ones, change the position. And down here, we run the game. True, false, false. But if we change these at the end to be 180 and 270, let's try running this now. You can see those were all true. So we do accurately check. That's good. I'm going to wrap up this tutorial here. If you have any questions then let me know down below if you want to watch more about tile maps then check out these videos here other than that thanks for watching